income is 7,800, expenses are 4,550, total debt 363,000, cash flow is 3,350. We have a HELOC from Navy Fed and it's 450K, 6.5%. It's got an 18 year draw period on this, which is awesome. Let's see, we, when I first started speaking to him, we owed 34,000 on the HELOC. That's how much is owed on the HELOC itself. This guy has about just under 50K in retirement accounts. And he started a security business. So his goal is to you know, make that successful and create some more revenue from that, which is important. So that's one of the goals is come successful with a security business and then also just, you know, debt free, which is cool. We want that. So 34,000 owed on that line of credit from Navy Fed. Navy Federal also does checking line of credit, which functions pretty much just like a personal line of credit. And Navy Federal also has some pretty decent credit card offers as well. So something to keep an eye out for all of those that are watching that still have not acquired a line of credit or any type of debt tool. So going back to his debts, 28,500 owed on a car, monthly payment 527, Interest rate, 3.25%. Got the 34 k owed on the, e on the HELOC. And then we got 9 k owed on a credit card at 0%. Monthly payment, 98 bucks. That's a Chase credit card. And then the big one, the mortgage, 291. Okay. 1878 is the payment. All right. So income is gonna be going in simple shift. When we first started talking, that was the only thing he had to do. Um, there is no chunking going on. There's no move that we can make right now. Primary goal is to bring that HELOC down so that we can leverage it, okay? So 7,800 going in, expenses coming out. We're gonna do that for six months. Even if the line of credit is not at zero in six months, I simply am trying to knock that down as much as possible. So if we looked at it conservatively and said 3,350 times six months, it's 20 grand, right? Cash flow times six, the 3,350 is 20,100. <clears throat> so 50,000 times 66% is 33K. And let's see what this will look like in about six months, 30K. And all I'm doing is simply dumping all income in, taking expenses out over the course of 30 days so that I can maximize the cash flow that goes into the HELOC so that none of this gets charged interest. The current payment on the HELOC is 198. When I dump all income in, understand that this disappears. It gets pushed out. So if I'm in November, he won't have a payment till maybe January if he dumps all this in. And then if he does it in December, then he pushes the date out into March 2020. So he'll be constantly pushing that due date out further and further and majority of this, all of this, becomes principal when it initially goes in. And then throughout the month, I'm getting charged nickels and dimes, you know, pennies, dollars, nickels and dimes uh, throughout the month, which amounts to maybe under 100 bucks in interest in the first month, about 100, maybe 120. And then it'll drop by maybe eight to $10 each and every month. And that's very, very important. That's why we 
send all our money and not just the cash flow. Because if we were to just send the cash flow, then you have to understand that a lot of that cash flow would go towards interest. Therefore, we lose that money. So we want to lose it. That's why we dump all that income in. So I want to keep stressing on that as new people are watching and they're asking, dude, why don't I just send the cash flow each and every month? Ain't I going to get the same results? No, you will not. You will not. You'll pay more interest than this guy that dumps all his income in, period. So let's see, 21,000, doing good. <clears throat> That's one, two, three, four. 21,000 minus 7,800 plus 4,550. 17,750 plus 14,500, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. Um, so once I wrote, approach this point right here, if this 0% does not expire yet, I will not touch it for this guy that I'm working with. And he didn't put it on the thing as to when it expires. But if this credit card expires during this time, then we would simply shift 9,000 over here. The balance would go back up to maybe 30 somewhere. You know, if it was like over here, then it goes up to a little bit over 30. But if it's over here, it goes to like 29 or 30. If it's over here, you know, just add 9K if it was to expire. And then I get a cash flow gain. And I also avoid that high interest on the credit card. I bring it over here to 6.5 to avoid that. If it does not expire by this time, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to leave it alone. And I'm going to focus my attention on the car. Okay? So six months of paying 527, okay, 527 times six, that's 3,162. Okay? And if my balance is at 14,500, I only want to chunk a max of up to 33,000, I'm gonna minus the two to get a solid number to see what I, I can work with here. 18,500 is what you get when you minus 33 from the 14,5, okay? So 28,5 minus 3,162 minus 18,5 brings me down to 6,838, but let me just way overball it and say the balance is, you know, maybe at 8K because of uh, interest, right? So if I bring the balance down to 8K, now, however much interest I saved over here, and I could run that real quick to get an idea of what that would look like. And if you ever want to run your own numbers at home. I use the amortization schedule on the Excel. Might be the easiest uh, amortization schedule I've ever seen in my life. Very easy to follow. All you do is put the balance owed and the loan interest rate being the 3.25%. And let's say there are I could probably guess how many years he has left. 28,500 divided by 527. That's 54 payments with no interest. So 54 divided by 12 is 4.5 years. So let's add six years. Let's, let's call it six. If it was six years, my schedule says that his payment would be 436 a month. So we're gonna say seven years. Oh, actually, no, we're gonna go five, five years because the payment is 515, 28, uh, da, 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 let's see. I think it just might be 4.5 years, let's see. 568, no, it's like 5.8. So you just play with it until you get a decent uh, number to work with. Okay. 
So I have, yeah, we're going to go with five years. Let's say he's got five years left on it at that 3.25%. And let's say that he makes a chunk six months from doing velocity banking on the HELOC. So we go six months out. So I'm going to go on here. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six on my amp amortization, the balance on the vehicle six months from now will be $26,248.95 in six months. $26,248.95. Cool. Paid, paid six months worth of payments and that's what the balance dropped to from $28,500. And then now I'm going to do a chunk of 18.5 over here. And let's see if my guesstimation was accurate. So I'm gonna do a principal only payment of 18,500. The balance drops to 7,29507. So better than what I said. So if the balance drops down to 7,000, 29507 now we look at okay how much interest did i save from that move so on here it even it even shows you on the amortization schedule how much interest you'll pay if you do nothing but just pay the bill and then whatever your chunk is you put that on the date and you pay attention to the number that it was at and then what it goes to and you just minus from the two so when I put it in, the interest goes from like $2,366.99 down to $595.86. So I would have saved $1,771.13 on this debt right here, right? So I'll save that much. Cool. This is called cushion. This is what I just saved from taking the bank's money of 18.5 and throwing it over here and wiping that down. And now we're gonna determine how much interest am I gonna pay over here on the 16 point, on the 6.5 interest rate. Cause you're like, whoa, why the heck would you shift that much debt from 3.25 back up to 6.5? Again, we're trying to pay off debt, right? Not pay down debt. We're trying to pay off the debt. There's a difference between paying down and paying off. There is. There's a major difference. And that'll be like a, that's like a, a mind twister right there. Like, huh? What did he just say? So let's see. Um, 14500 plus 18500 Balance goes up to 33 k Right, so let's see. Thirty-three thousand. All right, because I made a principal-only payment, I still have to pay the car payment for that month, whatever month I'm in. So my expenses will, let's just say, it stays the same. Thirty-three thousand uh, times six point five percent is two thousand one forty-five. Divide that by three sixty-five. That's five dollars and eighty-seven cents a day. $5.87. All right. And then when you do 33,000 minus 7,800, that's 25,200. Do it again. Times it by 6.5% divided by 365. That's $4.48. And then you add expenses, 29,750. Do it again. Times the interest rate. Divided by 365, $5.29. And then you add all three up to get the median number, 5.87. So now we're at 15.64 and divide by three. Now you got 5.21. 5.21 times 30 days. $156, okay? 
for the first month. So 33,000 minus income plus expenses. Boom, 29K, 750. Now I'm gonna overestimate what my interest cost is gonna be. So the second month, no matter what, it's gonna be less than the first month, okay? So let's see, I'm gonna, I gotta do these numbers all over again. So this is what you're doing at, at home. When you go month by month with your numbers, is this is what you simply do. After making a chunk, you're gonna determine how much money's going in, how much is coming out, how much cash flow stays in. So you'll get three separate numbers. You'll have the total amount of money that would have gone into your debt tool, which would bring your balance to one number. And then you have the total amount of money coming out, which will bring your balance to another number. And then you have the original number that you started with. And you take those three numbers, times it by the interest rate, divided by 365, times it by, um, just add the three numbers, right? Times it by the 6.5 divided by 365, you're gonna get something like that, right? One point something, two point something, four point something. And then once you get three numbers, then you add the three and then divide by three. Add the three up, divide it by three, boom. That'll be your daily interest cost for that one specific month. Then you do it all over again. Okay? And it takes, what, five minutes to do? Not bad. Gives you a nice idea of what you're looking at. You know? So I had 29750 right? I'm going to times it by that interest rate. I'm at 529 Now I'm at $3.00. Now I'm at 4.71. Add them up again. 4.71 plus 3.9 plus 5.29. See how that number just went down? This is why we dump all income in. Times that number by 30 days, 139 bucks. Okay, 139 bucks. Cool, wonderful. During this time, what else can I be doing, right? I could be possibly cutting back on more expenses. Uh, we are approaching the end of the year going into next year, so I do believe the gentleman is going to receive some type of bonus. So that'll help with my cost, right, in terms of offsetting that. Um, let's see, what else? As soon as this credit card runs out i definitely want to hit that i do believe he has like a really long duration on that which is why we're not even touching that in the monthly payment so low um so that is a huge advantage there but let's keep looking at this because i'm getting a little worried now because i'm like hmm is that actually a good move got 156 139 is that actually a good move compared to what i saved on interest versus if I was to do velocity banking for those six months and rather than tackling the car, I could tackle his mortgage and potentially get a better gain from that. Let's see if that would make sense. <clears throat> because, and see how important it is to run numbers because there are times where it may not make sense to tackle the smallest debt or the next smallest debt when we're doing velocity banking, when we're leveraging the bank's money. And this is why we do this. Because I'm, I'm seeing that, I'm like, hmm, okay, if my interest drops from 156 down to 139 it drops by $17 so if I just conservatively did that the third month 139 minus 17 third month I pay 122 minus 17 105 1 2 3 4 88 71 so six months 71 plus 
88 plus 105 plus 122 plus 139 plus 156. So in six months, I avoided paying 1,771.13 over here, but I did pay 681. So my net and six months, this, this is before I chunk again to, to get rid of this, right? Because once I go six months out again, doing velocity banking, whatever that balance is at, it's going to be enough to take care of this. And then, of course, take care of this when it does expire, right? So 1771.13 minus 681. So you would have a net positive interest savings of 1090.13. There is no cash flow gain because you're still paying that during the whole six months. So let me see what it looks like on the amortization calculator. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six months from the time that we made this chunk, the balance would go down to somewhere around 4,755.31. And so whatever the balance is on the HELOC, six months out, I'm definitely going to chunk that for that cash flow gain of 527. So after running the numbers, I'm sticking with this plan here. This actually does make sense. It's better to do it this way because we're tackling and going after cash flow. I want to be nice and prepared before I hit that primary mortgage. So he could go both ways. If we were to run the numbers, we could say, hmm, let me do a velocity banking for six months, get the balance down. If this credit card doesn't interfere, right? If it doesn't expire before six months, then we could look at this move, putting an early chunk on the mortgage just for the sake of interest savings, not cash flow gain, but interest savings. And then a couple months go by, wipe out the card when it, when it expires, get a quick 98 cash flow gain, and then jump to the vehicle, right? Because the vehicle over the course of the whole time period, I'm looking at about, let's see, about maybe three grand in interest, 28,500 times 3.25 is 926.25 but then over the course of a seven year period amortize, it looks like it ends up looking like about, let me get rid of this chunk to see. Yeah, it ends up looking like about three grand in interest, right? And not that it's a whole lot of interest savings, but it is a huge cash flow gain in terms of making that final chunk. If we were to go this route, making that final chunk getting that cash flow gain, it'll, take, it'll be a lot faster in terms of bringing the line of credit closer and closer to zero to then start hitting the mortgage. So that would be, you know, this, this is a good strategy. Even though I was like second guessing myself at first, it still looks good the whole way through. There is a gain no matter what, um, but there are, there is another way. There is a second way, which is to not tackle the car and maybe do an early chunk on the mortgage just for the sake of interest savings, big, big interest savings. Like we're talking like 10, 15K, you know, and that might be attractive depending on the goals of this individual.